No, no, well, yeah, like, we don't even need to have the glasses on to be intelligent. We're just that awesome. I can type the smart words. Yeah, you, you do that. I am a suck. I failed English. That's impossible. Uh, this, this is so... Yeah, we're smart. Smartest people in the world, I tell you. I... Yeah, yeah, I'm smart. Chaos Jumper off track. Rhetorical question. I, I, grant, I grant you all the option to be called intelligent simply by being here. Because you wish to be informed and you wish to be around people who also wish to be informed. So it's like a circle jerk of being smart. That's a horrible word for it, but I'm, I'm gonna just run with it anyways. So, as far as smart people go, of course, smart people follow the news. And the smart people of the cartoon world follow the cartoon news. So, what do you say we jump into the news of cartoon for the past week? Because, let me tell you, we've had some very bad news for the past couple of weeks as far as cartoons go. So, let's have some good news. Yes, we can finally have some good news for the things that have happening in cartoons recently. Not a whole lot. But, uh, it slightly step up. Slightly. Um, I guess you can be the judge of that after this whole thing. Uh, let, let's start with the first thing, which is, uh, let's get the bad news out of the way first. And I know this is something that a lot of you are going to be not very happy to hear about. But then again, this is what Cartoon Network does. Okay, so, we're all on Cartoon Network here. We're talking about bad news, so just take a guess as to what they're doing. They are doing cancellations again, yes. N Cartoon Network has officially announced that both Beware the Batman and Symbionic Titan are no more. Not only are they being cancelled, but they can't even air on Cartoon Network anymore. So they, they are completely done. They're, they're doing the tax write-off thing, yes. Cartoon Network has officially written off, just completely taxed off, Beware the Batman and Symbiotic Titan, the same way they did with other shows. Uh, most prominently, they did it with Megas XLR, where the show just wasn't doing it for them, just wasn't getting the viewings they wanted, so they figured instead of keeping it in syndication and letting people watch it, they're just going to write it off as a, as a tax, tax way. Like, you can write off a show that did not do so well and say, I'm just not going to air the show anymore. Again, just no taxes. Just taxes. Just write it off as taxes. So, the very last ep the very last time you will be able to see these shows is this Saturday, where Toonami is actually going to marathon the last seven episodes of Beware the Batman, and is going to... What are they doing? Are they doing anything for Cinematic Titan? No, actually, no. They're, they're just airing the last episodes of Beware the Batman. This Saturday. So from 2.30 to uh, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, obviously. And that that's it. That's the last time you'll ever see those shows. You will have DVD releases, and I'm pretty sure iTunes will have it up for viewing, so it's not like you'll never be able to see the shows again. But if you relied on cable networks to kind of get your source for cartoons, bid goodbye on this one, because you'll never get those two ever again. And Miss Kitty never liked Megas XLR. It's not for everyone. I, I like. I actually was not the biggest fan of of um, what is it? Um, of Young Justice, honestly. Uh, I mean, there are just some shows that don't do it for everyone. Megas XLR is not one of them, but we'll still forgive you in this regards. Besides, we're all kind of mourning the loss of our cartoons here, so yeah, enough of that. Enough of that, I say. So let, let's finally go on to something good, shall we? Something that actually fills us with glee, possibly. Okay, maybe this isn't exactly gleeful, but um, this is a follow-up on a previous story. Okay, we all knew that the Hub Network was going to be no more. That it was being rebranded as Discovery Family Channel. Um, I kind of was under the impression that it was going to take a little while for that to happen. Like, you know, a month or maybe two months just to, like, you know organize itself out. Uh, no, no, that's not what's happening at all, no. Um, October 13 is the day that The Hub becomes Discovery Family. It is that fast that they're doing this. Like, barely a week ago they announced this, and in two weeks, it's all going to be switched over. So, yeah, that they are really, really planning on doing this really fast. I mean, uh, as we discussed last week, it's going to be 
Discovery, like the Discovery Channel, owning more of the channel, Hasbro's gonna have some stake in the channel, gonna have uh, still some programming on there, but considerably less than they did when it was called The Hub. And that's basically going to lean more towards family-friendly programming, um, I don't really have any idea of what those shows are going to be just yet, but it is going to change up the dynamic of The Hub, which has been having a rough time as of late and does need a bit of box shakingness if they want to be on top. Well, Nickelodeon doesn't really have its act together right now, so they could very easily take the number three spot when it comes to cartoon programming blocks on standard channels. They just can't top Cartoon Network or possibly Disney, though Disney's kind of meandering there a little bit, but I won't get into that. So yeah, um, October 13th is going to be the official launch of Discovery Family. Um, I only call it good because um, I, I just consider it like something new needed to happen anyways, and to be honest, I haven't been following the hub that much in the past year or so anyway, so... Maybe some good will come of this. I mean, we don't know until we actually see it happen. I'm not holding my breath on this or anything, but we'll find out. And yes, as Rob pointed out, and I heard about this elsewhere, that Hasbro is in talks with Cartoon Network to uh, work on their own programming now. It's odd considering, um, what was the last thing they worked on? Um, I think it was actually Transformers Animated was the last Hasbro show that aired on Cartoon Network. I'm not so sure how the relationship is going to be after that, but Hasbro, you know, is not making any money. I mean, it's not like any of their franchises are part of a multi-trillion dollar movie deal nowadays. I mean, yeah, they, they're just flat broke right now. They've got no money. Yeah, no, that's not true at all. Yeah, it's going to be, um, wh whatever Hasbro decides to do from this, it's probably going to be shifting further away from the hub or Discovery family now, and this is just going to be where we're going. So, maybe it'll be good, we still have to find out. Fingers crossed, though, that will be good. So, maybe we can get some good news here after all. Let's, uh, let's shift over to, um, something that some of you might enjoy. Um... How many of you, and this is a genuine poll of your tastes, how many of you remember a show called The Winx Club? W-I-N-X Club. I'm hearing the crickets chirp as some people, yeah, say, I recall it, I've heard of it, I didn't really watch it is the thing. I'd, and Itchy would rather just not, would just not mention it at all. Um, it was an Italian show, I, I've learned this recently, and it was a little um, odd that I didn't even know Italy made cartoons, but apparently they do. Oh yes, apparently they do. And in fact, they make this one so well that the, it's actually getting a spin-off. Yes, The Winx Club is getting a spin-off. And guess who's backing this one? Netflix. Yes, in Netflix's attempt to be a competitor in the cartoon-creating world, and after they've greenlit like 20 remakes, which I, I really like, they've greenlit a Magic School Bus remake, they've got a bunch of remakes in the works, they decided this was one well worth remaking, I guess. So, yeah, Winx Club WOW, which does not stand for World of Warcraft, it actually stands for, get this, World of Winx. And I, I, uh, anyways, yeah, that's a new show that's going to be made for, um, uh, for Netflix, and it's planning to be made in spring of 2016, or that's when it's going to be, um, airing, basically, or streaming, I guess, I mean, I don't even know if we'll have televisions by 2016, so, yeah, <laughs> I sense a lawsuit coming. I'm under the impression that this was, um, a mutual agreement between the original creators of Winx and Netflix just, you know, deciding... Some people like the show. I mean, it's got potential to it. Let's greenlight a remake of it, which sometimes works out well, and sometimes it sucks. It really, it really depends on who you get on it and whether or not it's a cash grab or if they generally want to continue the story. I was not a fan of Shaolin Chronicles, for example, and that just kind of screamed cash grab to me. So, but do 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 we care enough about Wings Club? I, I don't know. I, I'm waiting for people to to generally tell me whether or not this is well worth the watch. The only thing I remember the show was the theme song, because as soon as the theme thong song came on, the theme song, not the theme thong, I will punish myself after this. Uh, I just flipped the channel as soon as that song came on, so... 
Some people liked it. Uh, I never got far enough into it to find out whether or not it was well worth the watch, so... Again, some people liked it, so there's your good news for the day. At least we have progressive news. Something's being created as opposed to being cancelled. Let's keep that ball rolling, shall we? We have more cartoons being created, in a sense here. And this one is something that only you Canadians will probably hear about. It is come to our attention that, yes, Canada is a pioneer in keeping their shows going. And fortunately, they got some taste because they finally canceled Johnny Test, which needed to happen a long time ago. But anyways, they are continuing some of their other shows. So, which one is going to be uh, renewed this time? It is called Slug Terra. Have you heard of Slug Terra? That is a very awkward title to say. Um, and not that the show itself is any more or less interesting by just the sound of it by itself, but yes, you have heard of Slug Terra, and this show is getting a third season. Yes, it has recently come to news that the company Nerds Corp, who animates the show for Canada, has greenlit 13 more episodes for this quote-unquote hit series. And it's very much, um, uh, the reason for this is so much because it's made a lot of money in not just the show of broadcasting, but a lot of product placement as well. It is, um, in fact, I, lo I love the wording on this. It actually says, uh, it has made a lot of money with toy ratings, uh, uh, top ratings, and toy sellouts. It literally uses the word sellouts in the article to classify what the show is. Yeah, so, um third season of that coming out there, and again, if you've never seen the show itself, um, just just know that um, its success is mostly attributed to it being a male demographic show about slugs and action. Like, the, you know that one Tiny Toon episode where they mock Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but instead they call it Super Secret Samurai Slugs, something like that? Um, this is basically that. Um, it is um, slug superheroes. Slug superheroes. There are worse things you could have turned into superheroes, and I'm, again, I'm trying to be um, uh, impartial to this because I have not seen the show. I don't have a desire to, but it's obviously not targeted towards my demographic anyways. But yeah, third season of that coming out. So keep an eye out for that, you lucky Canadians and anyone else who might be in the area where it's being um, produced, I guess. Yeah, let's, let's go with this. Let, let's slug episodes. Let's keep this going. Again, I'm trying to be unbiased about this. And so, um, th that's all things being created here. And interestingly enough, I just realized all of our stories are like from all over the world today. We've got Italian animation, we've got Canadian animation, we've got American animation. Just, again, we're all over the place. I, I will not bring my, I will not bring my pretty wife on the stream because she is too pretty for the likes of people who are buzzed. I only bring sober people around my wife. She is a delicate flower and I want to keep her well protected. Anyways, where was I going with this? The final story for the night. The final story is something that many of you may not be interested in, but I think it's actually well worth noting because this kind of took me by surprise. Alright, so... I remember last week we were talking about Mexican animation because they're making that new Top Cat movie that's basically um, Mexico making their own version of Top Cat. And I mentioned I didn't even know that Mexico had an animation department, or rather much of an animation studio as it were. Uh, turns out I was kind of wrong and a little bit right at the same time. Going on right now, um, this is something that's happening from last Wednesday all the way to Sunday, there is actually an animation festival going on in Mexico right now. It's, uh, called, it's run by Pixelatl. I'm trying to group the letters there together as they're written, I apologize. And basically what they're doing is they're trying to get funding for government-funded film projects, basically. They're, they're looking for, um, yeah, grants and funding to make movies in Mexico, and a good part of that is the animation that they're, uh, their animation. Because Mexico does not have a lot of animated films to their canon, I, I looked this up, they often do work for other places, like some of your cartoons you've watched could have had work done, like just small bits of the work done in Mexico, 
and most of, but most of their works are not their original creations. They are mostly outsourced to other countries. The only ones that I've noticed before are the Top Cat one, and they've also done some um, capture motion films as well, the kind where you film the actor with a lot of um, sensors on them, put it into the computer, and use that as the backbone for your animation, basically. So, the reason for this being going on is basically, apparently, it is the biggest animation festival in Mexico, and they are trying to get people to fund Mexican animation, like, original Mexican animation. So, yeah, that's something that, it, it interests me because we are seeing all countries of the world now getting into the animation field. Ireland, Italy, Canada, Hungary, Denmark, Australia, uh, Japan, obviously, China, Korea, Mexico's getting in their, their hat in the ring now, so, yeah. I'd like to keep an eye on Mexico and what they do with this, because right now they're basically having people pitch ideas for uh, cartoon series, and the winner gets, quote-unquote, 250,000 pesos, which kind of, you, you do equivalent exchange, that's about $19,000, which is still a lot for an amateur project being put together, is going to be, that's what they're doing right now, they're trying to kickstart the Mexican animation world, as it were. Whether, what comes from this, I'm not so sure, because I'm not, again, we have very little context to go from when it comes to Mexico animating by themselves. If there's other works out there by Mexico that I'm not familiar with, I apologize, but feel, feel free to let me know, and my arrogance shall be cleansed, hopefully. Um, and interesting also about this is uh, they've got quite a bit of um, big names coming down to that festival right now. Um, John Kay, the guy who made Ren and Stimpy, he's down there. we got people who've worked on Gorillas, and we've had uh, people who've directed stuff for, uh, what was it, uh, for video games. Um, and the supervisors for uh, the upcoming Book of Life movie. Um, just lots of people working to try to, I suppose, kickstart the animation of Mexico. It's just something to keep an eye on there. So if you're a hardcore cartoon nerd, like myself, then this is something you want to keep an eye on. And if you just want to wait until you actually see a finished product, then we'll keep you informed on that as well. But yeah, Mexico, getting into the cartoon world. We will dominate the world. The revolution of cartoons has to begin with every country jumping in on the bandwagon. So, let's get in on this. I mean, did you know Brazil makes cartoons? I bet you did not know that. Yes, I've seen cartoons come from Brazil before, like, legitimately funded, semi-cheap, but still fully animated cartoons from Brazil. Viva la revolucion! Power to the cartoons. We will do this. We will win the war against the live action. I will start that by turning myself into a cartoon, but yes, we will get on to the cartoon bandwagon whole world. No, it, no, Brazil ones I've seen were actually in Flash. They were not CGI, they were very basic Flash. But considering the fact that they came from a country that I know does not have as big of a film industry as Canada or America, I was, I was glad to at least see it. At least they're trying. At least they're trying. So yes. That's what's going on. We have some good news. We are making progress. Yes, we are losing Beware the Batman and the Symbiotic Titan show, but that just frees up Genji Tarkowski to make that, that Samurai Jack movie that I've been waiting for. Sooner or later, hopefully it will come up. And we're getting plenty more new shows getting renewed. And like, again, Winx Club! Woohoo! Slugterra! Yes! I, I'm trying, again, I'm trying to stay biased. Uh, unbiased until I've actually seen the shows for themselves. We'll just keep waiting until some more good shows are greenlit, and as soon as that Popeye movie comes out, then we can expect the Samurai Jack movie. The revolution has is coming. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will be animated. So says mm, the world of Mexico, I guess. Woohoo!